Um, it's good to be here today. I am normally in one of two classes, either Principles of Management. How many of you have taken that class? Everyone? It's a requirement, right? Um, so the reason I, I wanted to bring that up is we talk about tying your strategy for your business to the way that you manage your business, the way that you manage performance, the way that you hire people, and you want to find a best fit for your company. Um, it's all based on your business strategy. So last year, uh, I spoke to this class with one of my associates, and it, it was interesting to be able to talk to you about your own professional development and your search for the right employer that you're going to be the best fit for. It may be Shaw Industries. It may be uh, numerous companies, you know, that you're going to find your best fit. The way that we conduct all of our interviews is designed to match our business strategy and also to help find the person that's going to be the best fit for us. And we do all that based on competencies. Uh, many of you have probably studied uh, and read about competencies already, um, competencies that are required to do well in your jobs and, and be best fits for jobs. Um, I'm part of an organization called SHRM, which is the HR management organization. Uh, it's a global co uh, organization. And we certify people based on competencies. So uh, when you're reading about competencies in all of your business classes, even in training and development, that's what we're, I'm teaching this semester, um, in training and development, we talk about competencies. And what competencies you possess beyond your experience, beyond your education, and beyond your personal interest, beyond the outreach that you're doing in your communities. It's beyond all of those things. Your competencies are the things that make you the best fit for a job that we're looking for, but also in your search, you should be looking for that in the company that you want to work with and the job that you're going to be look, looking for. So to start with, um, I thought I would show you the Shaw website and how you find a position and just show you one of our normal posts so that you can see the competencies in the post and you begin maybe getting familiar with what you're looking for when you search in a job. So I have the Shaw website up. Let's see, what are we going to do to be able to see that a little bit better? Okay, so we're going to just scroll to the bottom here, see if I can get to the bottom of the page here. You're looking at carpet ads and everything that we're doing to try and make you want to buy carpet as well. And then when you get to the bottom here, most, most websites for all companies are going to have something on there that shows you about their careers. Okay, and so with our site, we try to really help you understand a little more about our company on this page, about the different things that we offer to you, and why we're such a great place to work, of course. Um, and what I want to show you is in the College to Career section, it talks about several of our programs that we have. And we have a list of uh, frequently asked questions that I like to take people straight to so that they can see how we actually um, interview. Oh, I forgot to take you to the job. Hold on, let me take you back to the job. Go back. Job first, right? Let's find a job you're interested in. Um, so it talks about the different types of opportunities. I've got to find my job posting here. You, yeah, there it is. Gosh, it, it would, if it was a snake, it would have bit me, right? Okay. So um, with all of our job listings, we have similar, similar things. Uh, let's pick HR trainer since I'm in HR. That's my, my thing. So it talks, all, uh, of course, about it has a standard job description to let everybody know what the person is responsible for in this job. And then as you 
as you scroll down, you're going to see required competencies. Communicates effectively, collaborate, adapt and change, and initiate action. So I'm going to show you what that's tied to with our business strategy. Before I do that, I'm going to show you about the interviewing style that we use. Let's see if I can get right back to that, to the frequently asked questions. Because, you know, you just, if you want to just apply for a job, you, that may not be all you need to know. It's not going back for me. I'm just going to get out of that. All right, here are frequent, frequently asked questions. And if you scroll down, you're going to see how we, we help you understand how we interview for people. So it says, how do we interview for professional candidates? Um, targeted selection is a type of interviewing that if you've learned anything about interviews yet, you'll call it behavioral or situational interviewing. The, the point of interviewing is to draw information from the candidate. So you need to be prepared with information that's going to match the job that you're searching for. Information that is part of your vast history, okay? You're going to need to be thinking about and even practicing. Maybe you can find someone to role play with. You practice talking about things in your background that you know are going to make you very well suited for this job and specific competencies, okay? Target selection has been around for more than 30 years. It's been called different things over the years, but it's a type of interviewing that is very successful that companies have just, um, they've perfected it over the years and they call it different things depending on whose program you purchase. So what does it look like? Can everyone see this? These are what you call open-ended questions. So if you're ever talking with someone that you need to try and get information from, um, maybe your spouse or your child or your girlfriend or, or anyone, not just a business setting, you're going to ask open-ended questions. You're not going to say, well, do you feel good today? And they're going to say, yeah or no. Oh, that didn't really tell you much, right? So ask a question that's going to prompt them to give you more information. And these are some examples. Tell me about a time when you made a bad decision. What did you do? And that one is framed to get a negative answer because we know you're not perfect, okay? Normally we're going to ask you a positive question to, to tell us about, you know, something you did that you were successful at. Um, like, provide an example of a situation where you had to create an agreement between parties who originally differed in opinion, approach, and objectives. So that's a positive framed question. I want to know about your experience. I want you to tell me some stories, okay? And then I, I want to know what your failures were, and I want to know how you bounced back from those failures. So when you're thinking about the way you interview, um, hopefully lots of companies are doing this. It's part of our HR uh, competency that, that we interview people this way, and so it's, it's, it's a very popular way of doing things, and you get a lot more information. So how do you prepare for this? We use an acronym called STAR, and it's a very easy way to learn how to respond to interview questions. And the person who is interviewing you is going to rate you based on what you tell them, in other words, the situation that you were in, and how relevant it is to the question I asked. So a situation or maybe a task that you performed. So the ST part of the star is either situation or task. So tell me about a situation where you managed a budget, okay? Or tell me about a task that you performed that relates to budgeting. 
that would be if I'm looking for someone in the tax department or you know in the accounting department or something like that or maybe you're a manager who has a budget as part of your task um, so I want to know about a situation or a task so you're going to think about your experience and hopefully you've looked at the competencies you know what the job requires and you'll be prepared to answer with your own experience about a situation or a task that you were involved in. The next part of it is a action. So talk to us about what actions you took. Um, when you were managing the budget, what actions did you perform? Tell me the things that you were responsible for. Did someone else delegate it to you or did you manage it? It doesn't really matter. It's probably all going to be relevant, but the actions that you performed in that job, what you were responsible for, is the next really important part of the interview question and how you answer it. And then the final part of it is R for result. I want to know if you met budget, if you succeeded in your project. You know, if we're talking about managing projects, tell me about what the result was. If I'm talking to salespeople, I want to know, what were your results? Did you grow the business? How much did you grow the business? And as you begin to answer these questions, we'll build on that information. And we'll, it's kind of like pulling a thread, you know? We'll just kind of keep asking questions, and we'll get deeper and deeper into the subject. And we'll be able to tell if you're just spinning a big tail or if you really do have actual relevant experience and you can really talk about what you were doing in that job. So ask me questions about the STAR aspects of the interview. Does everybody understand what I'm talking about here? Pretty easy? Anybody need clarification on that? This is something that you can use not just for Shaw. <clears throat> When you go to interview with any company, they're just looking for information about you, and you're looking for information about them. So you can also use this technique when you're interviewing, because at the end of the interview, what's the first thing that people ask you at the end of the interview? What? Do you have any questions? So when you're framing your questions, Frame them in a smart way so that you can get the same information from the employer, right? Because we're competing for you. We, we're competing to hire you. You're interviewing with several people. And so you need the same kind of information that we have. You may want to know what the company person that is hiring, what, what that person's experience is. What are, the, what are the challenges that they face in their job? You know, what are some of the things, you know, find out what some of the smelly things in this company are. You know, let's, let's, let's talk about the positives and the negatives. Because nobody's perfect and no company is perfect, right? So, you know, these techniques are really good. I do believe you have to practice them. Um, I, I've talked before about how um, I have two adult children and bless their hearts that they have a mom who is in HR and I've practiced this kind of stuff with them for a very very long time and so they're accustomed to thinking about their own experiences and how they can apply them to different areas that they're interviewing for um, and, it, and it does take practice to get comfortable with talking about yourself a lot of people are not real comfortable talking about themselves and you know we're taught that we shouldn't brag about ourselves but this is your chance to talk about yourself and to shine and to present your own wealth of experience so practice those things that that are memorable that, that you think apply to different competencies so now that we've gotten through that part of it I'm going to get back to um, a presentation that I made for y'all and um, this relates back to the strategy. So I, let's see if I can make this bigger. Okay, so 
The strategy of our company is um, it's a talent model. It, it's a model that we created uh, for all of Shaw Industries that communicates to our company what we're um, wanting to drive, what, what our company wants to drive. And it's a little bit busy. Everybody agree it's a little busy? It, it's a little different than last year. Um, anybody who saw our model last year, it was a lot more complicated. Um, but I want to be able to explain this to you so that you know whenever you go to talk to any business, you want to understand what their business strategies are. If you understand their business strategies and, and their culture and what they're going for, you're going to see where you fit in that culture and whether you can help contribute to driving those strategies. So uh, my division is called Spectra. That's why you see Spectra and the Shaw Way, because I've been communicating to my Spectra division how they fit in with the Shaw Way and this business strategy. So when you're looking at this, you'll see at the top in the dark blue box on the right our vision, our mission, and our values. That's critical for you to know about every company. And every company has different things that they focus on. Um, it's just going to depend on you and your own personal beliefs, whether or not you're going to be a great fit for those visions, missions, and values. Uh, the next level is the business strategy. And our business strategy at Shaw, because I don't have my glasses on, I'll look at this, is drive innovation into the business. Because Shaw is a very um, established company. We've been around for 50 years, just like Dalton State. We had our 50th anniversary on, on the same year. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, when you have a very established company, people are kind of set in their ways for the most part, usually. And so we're trying to drive innovation. Um, that's a new thing for us, and we're really focused on doing innovative things in our very established, settled-in company. Um, we want to protect and make efficient use of our resources, engage our associates, customers, stakeholders, and communities, and focus on long-term business results. Those are our key business strategies. In the next box, you'll see imperatives, and that's how we get to those business strategies. That's how we implement them. So there are four major areas that we focus on. is people. We want to leverage and build our people. We want to grow the business. And there are a lot of different ways that we grow the business. We, we want to talk about innovation and change. And the fourth one is we want to be strategic. So those are the four imperatives that are going to help us implement our business strategy. And then on the right-hand side, you're going to see all of these green boxes. And that's the culture that we want in our company. Those are the most important aspects of our culture that are going to drive business for us. Respectful. We want people who are respectful to each other and our customers and our vendors. We want customer-centric people, adaptive. There's a lot of change. We've got to have people who are willing to change and adapt. Collaborative. We need people to be good at working in teams and to collaborate. We need people who can take strategic risk because, again, we've been a very safe company, been around a long time. Sometimes you have to take a calculated risk to make something new happen. We want empowered people, accountable. We want people to be accountable for their goals. We want candid people, and we want inclusive people to drive diversity. And then along the bottom, you're going to see our business outcomes. So those are the results that we're looking for. And, and bottom line, I like that it's on the bottom. It's about the bottom line. Those are the business outcomes we're looking for, and they're very specific. You know, they talk about um, sales goals in um, hard surface, modular carpet, broad loom carpet, and then we have um, new revenue streams and supporting businesses. Um, an example of that would be our Spectra division that I mentioned I work with. Uh, that's dealerships all over the country that do commercial flooring. Um, turf, that's another supporting business. Those are, you know, businesses that aren't all about carpet or hard surface. 
So this is something that, that is, is the basic first step of what drives our company. Then we add to that by talking about specific competencies. So let me go to the next slide. So the way we work with our competencies, and there are two slides for this because there's a top and a bottom to it. So I'm going to go to the bottom and just let you see the bottom part of it as well. So you've got people, innovation, strategy, and growth. Do you remember seeing those in the talent model? I talked to you about those four big imperatives. All right, so we're talking about each one of those major business imperatives. And then at the very top, you're going to see different levels of people in the company, starting with our upper level managers, and then every level of management beneath that. And every single level of management in each column has very specific competencies that relate to those business strategies that we're responsible for. And that has to do with our performance. So our performance throughout the year is going to have to reflect all of these competencies in each of the four categories that our company is focused on. So this is the third year that we've been working with these competencies. And everybody's now learning what we're supposed to be doing as managers. And we're also learning how to apply these competencies to jobs and to people who are performing jobs. So if I have someone who is a leader of others in the third column from the right, that's a person who's supervising, right? They're leading others. So they're going to have a whole list of competencies that are very, very important in their job. So if we just look at strategy and we look at plan and organize, how important is that for a supervisor? Very important. You've got to have somebody who can plan and organize if they're supervising every day. Um, so it, it kind of all ties together. And I'll go a little bit deeper on that competency um, so that I could, I found, uh, I wanted to show you an example of this. If I was in the website right now, I would have clicked on plan and organize and you could see all the detail behind that particular competency. But we've got a lot of detail for the person in this role. So this person is a leader of other and plan and organize is tied to the strategic imperative. All right? So they establish an action plan for themselves and others. They execute a strategic plan efficiently and on time by setting priorities, establishing timelines, and leveraging resources. So if you know those things about the job, if you see plan and organize on the job that you're looking at as one of the competencies, well, you can look up plan and organize anywhere. And you can see a whole list of things you know, on Google or anywhere that are involved in planning and organizing. And or, normally, you're going to be able to hit the exact things that we're looking for in that job at Shaw. So competencies are kind of universal. You're going to find very similar things in competencies everywhere. So you can look at this, and you can identify what things that you have in your experience. Maybe you're supervising in a different type of company. Or maybe you're a lead person. You can, you can compare your experience to what we're looking for or what any company is looking for when they're looking at competencies. So I want to really make you familiar with the competency language and the fact that competencies are really becoming a better way to measure how people are a better fit into jobs. So I had a, a picture here of... Um, a group of people racing only to, to, to mention that in our company we are really focused this year on um, not just doing reviews once a year. Instead, it's, it's like a marathon for us and we can't just walk out there one day and be ready to run a race like this. We have to prepare for it all year long. 
and build our strength and build our endurance. It's not something we can just wake up and walk outside and do well. And we're looking at our performance as an experience in that way too. We're trying to do very continuous coaching. Uh, we're trying to work very hard in groups about how to achieve things. Um, instead of just having a once a year performance review, and that's a big change for our company. We've always just done reviews once a year. And it's, it's, a, a, it's a trend right now. But I think it's a trend that is going to be successful that we're, we're adopting. Uh, because it's, performance is something that you do need to talk about very often to make sure that people are, you know, tied to the strategy. They're, they're able to hit their goals. If they're having issues, we're able to explore what, what are your barriers? What are the things that are standing in your way? What can we do to help you with that? You know, or if you're doing really well in it, let's share that with other people, right? So we're, that's, that's a really big movement for us this year to do performance um, in a continuous way. But anyway, that's, that's our Shaw strategy. I know that was a lot of information. What I would like to know is what you need as far as help, advice on how to prepare your resumes or to prepare yourself for positions that you may be looking for here or for Apple out in Cupertino, California or for Starbucks or wherever it is you want to work. What are some questions that you might have for me? specific skill? Well, on a resume, well, um, I can tell you that, you know, there are real specific things that our talent acquisition group will focus on as far as words. They will um, do searches in LinkedIn for specific words. Normally it's things that, uh, technical things, you know, certifications, they'll search on special types of certifications. Um, they may if they're looking for human resource professionals, it may be something like human resources. You know, it just depends on what job they're looking for. Um, may focus on the skill that's the hardest to find. You know, maybe they're looking for somebody who does estimating. They're going to search on estimating. Or they may search on the software and, and find resumes that way. Um, so does that, I mean, the skills always depend. Yes. Yeah. So that's a good example of, you know, just listing everything that you, all of your capabilities. So any kind of, um, I don't think social media is as important, you know, like we don't care about Facebook and all that. But, yeah, if you're used to working in a system that, you know, is that type of email, Google is going to benefit you. Um, I think the hard skill software is a little more important for, you know, people like IS professionals and people who use very specific types of programming software, those kinds of things. Um, but I, I tell my kids to put everything down that they know. I mean, you know, my son works with specific types of software in his profession and my daughter does in hers. And I'm like, put it all down there. If you learn it, put it down there. If you work with it, you know, and then when you get in the interview, they're going to find out just how proficient you are. So, you know, if you have very nominal use, maybe we were just exposed to it in a project, in a class, well, then put it down there and tell them. I have very minimal amount of knowledge or use in this particular type of software, but I did have exposure to it in college. And that might be more than the other person you're competing with. So, yeah, I think anything relevant. Other questions? That's a good question, Ashley. Other questions? I, 
it's a very subjective thing. It's very subjective. I, we were talking about this earlier today. I um, tell people that Monster has a lot of good examples of resume templates. I will say for us, if you use a template, our um, system may distort the template. So if you do use a template, just use it as a guide for yourself and create your own document. And that way it won't get distorted, you know, and look messy when it, when it goes through our software. Um, but I, I think what I did when I was looking at resumes for myself, I just looked at lots of different examples and I picked the one that I liked. I do think that um, people who don't have education tend to either leave it off or hide it. And I, I don't like having to look for it. But you're going to find some hiring managers who are very, very picky and will just throw out a resume for something silly. And then you're going to find somebody like me who's going to be interested in the resume. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. you know. But I'm looking for things to talk to you about and to connect with you about. So, you know, the more things that you have on there that, that you think are going to benefit the company and match our values, the more things you're going to connect with that person who's hiring. The other day we had somebody ask, uh, when we did the social media presentation out here, did anybody go to that? But someone asked about a fraternity and if that would hurt them. I'm like, oh my God, put the fraternity on there. Any kind of involvement in the school in your community, anything like that is, is going to be a connection with somebody and it's going to show that you did more than just study. You know, a 4.0 who stayed in their dorm room the entire four years of college, who never got out and did anything else, probably not going to be the most collaborative person. You know, and what are they going to talk about? Maybe they didn't think about putting anything on their resume, but if I don't see anything on there, that's going to scare me a little bit. I'm going to wonder, you know. So put, first of all, start building your resume really, really early. So if you're already a junior or a senior and you don't have your resume and you haven't really built a lot of, you know, being involved in, in things, whatever interests you, I don't care what it is. You could be on the bicycle race team or you could help volunteer at, your church or at the, you know, local pet shelter. Just as long as you did something and you care about something, that, that's what's important. To be able to show that you have a passion, that you've been at least exploring it, other than partying, and that you're, you know, trying to be a leader in some way. That's always a, a big bonus if you have any kind of leadership. So for the, the person who asked the question, um, last week about the fraternity, yeah, if you were in a fraternity, great. If you were on a committee, great, put that down. If you actually had an office, even better. If you haven't done it yet, volunteer for something right now. It's spring semester. If you're graduating in May, you better get going really quick. Volunteer for something and get involved, you know, and, and give of yourself. That's what most people are looking for because you're competing. You're competing with other people, and you need something to really set yourself apart. Yes, ma'am. If you've done a whole lot, I would um, focus on college, you know, the most recent. So, um, you know, it, it just depends on how much is a lot. You, you've got to... You might want to put it all if there's room. And then I get the question, one page or two. Everybody asks that question. If you can get it on one page, that's great, because some people are going to take the time to look further. You know, so if you can get it on one page, great. But I don't know that that's a real rule. I just know that a lot of people are busy, and they're going to look that far, and then they're not going to look any further. So put the most important stuff at least at the top. And if you have an organization that you've been with for a very long time, I think it's good to see the progression. You know, so you may want to list every role you played so that we can see how you advanced up to your leadership role. It started out in a committee. 
or I was just a member. Then I joined a committee. And then I was a something, something chairman of a committee. And then I was the VP. You know, that kind of thing. That kind of progression of leadership to show, well, okay, this person really is a leader. We don't have to have all leaders. We just need, you know, we need information about you. That's what we're looking for. Those are good questions. Other questions? Has anybody had this type of interview before? A situational, behavioral-based interview? Yeah? Was it, were, you know, these types of questions? Yes. You were just exhausted. Yes. Sometimes you'll have a theoretical, um, and it depends on the person who's interviewing. They, they want real situations. But I would just be honest and say, I can't think of a situation where I've actually been in that kind of situation. I mean, you know, I, I don't know that I've ever been in this situation. Can I talk to you about what I would do? And maybe you can get what we call a partial star. You know, and normally that's what I would do. If you're struggling, I would be like, well, tell me what you would do in that, in that situation. And that's what we call a theoretical one. But at least I'm able to dig in your mind a little bit and see how you think. You know, and that's the situation where you're probably going to tell me what you know is the best answer, right? Um, and, or I might go to another question. I might go to another question. And you can... Um, you know, I worked with my daughter on this when she was interviewing um, for a college program job. Um, it was hard for her to think and remember situations. And because I'm her mom, I was able to say, and so practice with somebody who really knows you, okay? Call your mom. Practice with somebody who really knows you. And I was able to say, what about when you were in band? Don't you remember that situation where so-and-so did so-and-so? And... -so and Oh, yeah, you know, those are situations. So you may have to go all the way back to high school. Try to make it as relevant, as recent as you can. If you don't have any more recent real situations, you might have to use that. And it, you know, it's still going to be a star, right? It's just going to be, well, this is the most vivid example of my behavior in a certain situation. And, yeah, I'm having to go back five years. Or if you've been in college for eight years, then maybe nine years. No, I'm just kidding. But, I mean, really, you're going to have situations. You can use personal situations and group and organization situations and classes. And with college students, we find a lot of, of class project examples of working with other people on projects and what did you do in this situation talk to me about that situation so you know sometimes it's you're just going to have to really think um, about your own experience and sometimes it's hard to do that if you're not used to doing it um, and it was hard for my daughter to, th to think of those things but once she got into the groove she was able to oh okay yeah I can think of a time when I felt like that or a situation where I was in that kind of position. Um, so. I just want to add something. Um, you know, you guys have that assignment of the attribute sheet, right? So this really gives you the opportunity to create those stars beforehand. Um, so, you know, you have your top attributes, but when you look at the job, um, and especially at Shaw, it tells specifically I think what attributes they're looking for. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you go back and you look at your attribute sheet, pick out the ones that you already have in common, and if you don't have one in common, then put it down and add a story, a, a situation. A and like uh, Ms. Sasser said, that you know if you've never been in that situation in a work experience, think about other situations where maybe you know in a club or 
in class or at church or, or any kind of situation where, where you've experienced something similar to that because that still shows your behavior. And that's what they're looking for in this type of interview. Because past behavior predicts future behavior. So how you've behaved in the past is going to tell us the most about how you're going to behave in the future. And it's not, it's not perfect. People lie. People are really, really, some people are so well rehearsed at interviewing. And, and I can't even tell if my kids are lying to me. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not a good judge of people who are not being honest. Um, so it's very, you know, it's very hard. This is the best way to get the best information. But I, s I will turn it around to you and tell you that if you're in an interview where you feel like you have to be dishonest just to get the job, it may not be the best fit for you. It, the job may not, you've, you've got to think about what's best for you. Again, you're in a position where you're competing for jobs, but we're competing for you. The, you know, the job, the labor market's really getting small. It's really getting small. And so, you know, look hard for the job that has the best profile that you think is going to be the best fit for you and the company. Because, you know, you can tell what companies' cultures are in the interview. And, and that's a question you might want to ask the person you're interviewing with. What, you know, talk to me about your culture. And I can be honest about Shaw and the positives and the negatives uh, about our culture. I, I talked about the fact that we're working hard on driving innovation. We're having to teach people how to be innovative. Last year, I got to tour the brand new Apple headquarters out in Cupertino. They are driving an innovative culture, but they already have innovation at Apple, of course. The design of that facility was amazing for people who want to sit around on beanbag chairs and literally beanbag chairs and people who want an office with glass and people who really don't want an office. I'm not a good fit for that. We were doing the flooring in there. That's why I was touring and I wasn't interviewing with Apple. We were doing the flooring in that facility. Um, but. I thought to myself, would I want an office with glass where I can hear everybody in the you know, area? And I, it's just not really the atmosphere I'm looking for. Um, a little more traditional than that. But for people who want to work for that kind of company, it's going to be great. It's going to be very collaborative. And people are going to be running around all over the place. They probably need segues. It's so big. Um, but anyway, it, it's, a, it's a specific type of environment designed for a specific type of thinker and strategy that's going to drive their business. Are we going to try to do a lot of beanbag offices at Shaw to drive innovation? No, we're not going to do that. But we are working hard at trying to drive a new competency into the company that we haven't had before. So. It'll help us grow. It'll help us be a different change, be a different kind of company, to stay competitive. So, any other questions? I don't know what time it is. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks everybody. Thanks for your attention.